Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. I'm Huck. Today I'm doing a series review for the Tensorate series by Neon Yang. So the first book is The Black Tides of Heaven, the second book is The Red Threads of Fortune, the third book is The Descent of Monsters, and the fourth book is The Ascent to Godhood. Okay, so hopefully this stays here and these don't fall because they're very skinny so they're hard to prop up so hopefully they don't fall during this review. Uh, anyways, so the Tensort series is silk punk fantasy, so it's set in a East Asian inspired world where they are also beginning to develop different kinds of machinery and weaponry. Uh, this is set in the Protectorate, which is ruled by the Protector, who is a tyrant. And in this world, there's a kind of magic that is called the Slack, and people who can use the Slack are called Tensors but the use of this magic is kind of reserved for the nobility and the upper classes. But among the common people, there is a rebellion brewing that is called the Mechanists because they're the ones who are developing this technology and this kind of weaponry to help them fight back against these magic users. And in this series, we're following a different character in each book of the series, and each book is written and delivered or framed in a very different way. So before diving into the rest of the review, I want to put some content warnings on this for grief, loss of of a child, animal abuse and animal experimentation, human experimentation, suicidal ideation and suicide, misgendering and dead naming. So first I want to talk about each of the books and kind of what they're about and what they're like and why each one feels so different. So the first book is The Black Tides of Heaven and in this we start out following two children who are twins, they are the children of the protector and they were promised to the monastery in exchange for the monastery's support during a rebellion. So we start out following these twins from I think about the age like six or something through their like mid-30s. So this book follows these characters for like 30 plus years in under 250 pages, so there are some very large time jumps. Um, but we get to really see these characters at different like pivotal moments in their lives. We get to see them as children and how close they are and then as they grow they make different kinds of decisions and sometimes those decisions do um, kind of make their paths diverge and cause cracks in their relationship but I really loved seeing their sibling relationship over this course of like 30-ish years of their lives. Now the second book is The Red Threads of Fortune and in this one we're following one of the characters that we had met in the first book. This book takes place about four years after the first book and we're following this character as they are grieving because about four years ago they lost a child and after that loss they kind of disconnected themselves from the world and their life and went out into the desert and became a monster hunter. Um, and so the book is very different like the story is very different from the first book because it does kind of become this like monster hunting story as they're like out in the desert hunting these like flying serpents with a pack of raptors with them um but really the story becomes about grief and this character grieving um and trying to figure out if there is a way for them to reconnect with the world and their old life. This one doesn't have any time jumps. It's told in a much shorter period of time. We're really just sitting with this character in their emotions and in their grief and seeing them trying to figure out how to process this and sometimes them, you know, pushing people away and lashing out and it's a difficult process for them. So this one definitely has a very different tone from the first. Then the third book is The Descent of Monsters, and in this one we're following a totally new character who we haven't had any contact with before, who actually is a government worker that is investigating an experiment gone wrong. So there's a facility where they had been doing some experiments and everybody has died and so no one knows what went wrong or exactly what happened and so there's this investigation going on and we're following the person who's leading this investigation but then they find out that the government actually wants them to kind of just cover up and move on from this investigation but our main character is very determined to find the truth and this one 
is told in kind of like an epistolary format because it's told through like letters and diary entries and documents and interview uh, transcripts and different reports and things like that. And one of the things that I especially liked about this one was seeing the contrast between the official investigation documents and then the personal letters and diary entries from this main character. And then the fourth book, The Ascent to Godhood, is following yet another new character. This is someone who's connected to the Mechanist Rebellion, um, and they are in a bar telling somebody their life story. Um, and their life story happens to have intersected with the life of the protector. So really we get some insight to the character of the protector and what her life was like, what she was like when she was young, and her rise to power and how she became the person that she is throughout this series. Um, so the framing of this one is very much one of those like, let me tell you my life story kind of setups. Um, and there are also even parts where it feels like the person telling the story is like addressing the reader because in between her like telling her life story, there are times where they're in the bar and she'll like address the person that she's talking to and say like, hold on a second, I have to go, you know, get another drink or like, oh, do you want me to tell you about this? So there is this feeling almost like she's addressing the reader. So that's kind of the four books in the series. But overall thoughts about this. Uh, first of all, the writing, I really enjoyed the writing style. I felt very like immersed in the writing. I thought it was really lovely. There were parts of it that were very quotable and I really liked the way that it gave you a strong feel for the world without being overly descriptive and giving you a strong feel for the world is also really important to this series because of the way the world building is done because the world building is not very explained. There are a lot of things that were just kind of told facts about the world without a lot of explanation about them. Like there's a point in the series where someone mentions that there's a part of this world where they have half gravity and then that's not explained at all, like how or why that is the case. Um, so I think it's a really interesting world. I think it's a really creative world. Like apparently there's a place that has half gravity. There are these like flying monsters in the desert and there are also feathered raptors that help people hunt. Um, one of the things that's also really creative about this world is the way that it handles gender because people can declare their own gender. So when they're very young, um, they use all gender neutral pronouns and they don't have a gender assigned to them. And then when they reach a certain age, they can declare their own gender. Um, so there are a lot of things about this world that were really interesting and really creative. Um, and I feel like the world building really told you just as much as you needed to know or just as much as was relevant to the story. And it also is the kind of world building where you really just have to learn as you go. There isn't really exposition. And I think that also makes sense for the fact that these are novellas, so there isn't really space for a lot of like exposition based like world building. Um, so I really liked this world. I thought it was really cool. And I really just like clung on to any bit of world building or information about this world that I could get. Now we also really just learn as we go with the magic in this world, which is the slack, um, which works pretty well because it's not a very complicated magic system. Um, it is like elemental magic. I really liked the way that the magic was integrated in the world. It has a lot of uses. We get to see that it has all very practical uses in people's lives, ways that the magic is connected to technology, and then also the magic is connected to um, their spirituality. So it's very integrated into the world and these people's lives, and I think it makes this world feel very lived in and gives this feeling of history. And I feel like this is something that Neon Yang does really well, is giving this feeling of history also to characters and relationships. So I really liked the way that they wrote characters, but also I really liked the way that they wrote relationships, but especially the like pre-established relationships. So these relationships that existed before the beginning of the book and were kind of coming in in the middle. Uh, because 
when I read those relationships, like I immediately bought into those relationships and their dynamics, and I was immediately invested in those pre existing relationships, especially the familial relationships. Um, the only ones that I was not as into were some of the romantic relationships that developed during the books. Um, and a lot of that is just because they moved really quickly. So I just didn't feel as connected to them. And it just kept feeling like, oh, wow, that happened fast. Um, but that didn't really bother me in this case for a few reasons. One being that these are novellas, so things kind of inevitably have to move quickly, um, but also because the romances in this were not the main focus of the story. They're usually something that was kind of happening in the background or like a side plot or like a subplot to it. And since it wasn't the main focus of the story, it didn't bother me as much that they had to like move quickly. And also just because I was enjoying so many other aspects of this series. So in this series, my favorite book of the series was the second one, which is The Red Threads of Fortune. And what's funny to me is that I read a bunch of different reviews and like watched reviews for the series. And it seems like the second book for a lot of people was their least favorite, which I can definitely understand because for one thing, it's not immediately obvious how it moves the main plot of the series along. It has a very different tone from the first book, which may be a little bit jarring, uh, but also because you are really just like sitting with this character and their grief and sometimes the character does things that makes it a little bit difficult to like them um, but I really enjoyed it because I like that kind of story where you're just sitting in this character's feelings and sitting with that grief and seeing how they are working through it and trying to figure out if they can reconnect with life and so that was the book that really like gave me the most feelings and was my favorite of the series. Um, then my second favorite of the series was the first book, The Black Tides of Heaven. And then my third favorite favorite was the third book, which is The Descent of Monsters. And my least favorite was the final book, which is The Ascent to Godhood. And for the third and fourth books, the only reasons really that I liked them less than the first two I think were because they had these very different uh, like modes of delivering stories that are just not favorites of mine. So the third one is the one that's kind of in this epistolary format, which is a style of delivering a story that usually doesn't work for me. It just is not a favorite of mine. Um, of the few books that I have read that use this like style of telling a story, this is probably the best one that I have encountered, but it's still just like not a favorite of mine. Um, then the final book has that very like, let me tell you my life story kind of setup, which is another way of delivering a story that's not a favorite to me. But I will say that as a whole, I really loved the way that these four books came together. So even for the ones that maybe didn't have my personal favorite like way of delivering a story, I can still really appreciate the role that they played in the larger story of this series. As for ratings, I gave the first book four stars, the second book 4.5 stars, the third book four stars, and the fourth book 3.5 stars. So that is all for my series review of the Tensorate series by Neon Yang. If you have read this series, please let me know what you thought about it, which one was your favorite in the series, uh, and if you haven't read it, are you interested in reading this series? Because it is a really cool series. Uh, but thank you all for watching, and until next time, bye!